Hello, everybody. Welcome into another edition of the Computer America Show. I've uh, got a great program planned for you tonight in the second hour. We're going to be doing computer and technology news brought to you by Slimware Utilities, the official optimization software of Computer America. And uh, also, um, in the first hour, we're going to have a company called Yappin here on the program. Um, it's a real-time multilingual company that basically allows, brings people together by, they have software, um, real-time multilingual uh, amplification uh, platform that they dissolve. It works with over 67 different languages. We One the, minute <laughs> until showtime. We have the company CEO and founder David Lukacs is here. Uh, so sit back, relax, enjoy the show as we begin two hours of Computer America. Ten seconds. Your show will go live in five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Broadcasting live, it's America's longest-running national radio talk show on computers, Computer America, hosted by national columnist Craig Crossman. Look for Craig's weekly column in your favorite newspaper. This show is being beamed nationwide at ComputerAmerica.com. Keep it here for technology news, computer products, guest interviews, and your phone calls. You're listening to Computer America. Hello, and welcome into the Computer America show. It's the nation's longest-running nationally syndicated radio talk show on computers. Computer America is heard around the world and coast to coast. And I'm your host, Craig Crossman. And I'm your co-host, Ben. And it's Monday! <laughs> no, this still doesn't work. I'm sorry. <laughs> you, see, you keep saying that. I think the only reason it doesn't work is because you say it doesn't work. Could be. I don't know. Anyway, welcome into it's Monday and uh, welcome to the Computer America Show. Hopefully, all of you had a wonderful uh, weekend, and uh, I know that we did. And you know, it's um, it's uh, what can I say? It's just uh, great to be here, and we're so happy to have you, our listening audience, here at the Computer America Show. In the second hour, uh, we're going to be doing computer and technology news. Uh, uh, brought to you by Slimware Utilities. They are the official optimization software of Computer America. And, and from what I understand, uh, Ben tells me the news from E3, uh, the Electronic Ex uh, Entertainment Exposition, is already coming in. You know, technically it starts tomorrow, but uh, but uh, news is coming in from uh, the E3. And we're going to be covering E3 on Wednesday. Uh, we have an association to Popzara Magazine. Uh, we're going to be having the Popzara's managing editor, Nathan uh, uh, Evans, is going to be with us. And also, uh, we have uh, Josh Boykin, our, our gamer correspondent, is going to be out there. And yep. uh, Corey's going to be there. Hopefully, he can join us uh, to talk about what he sees out there because, uh, you know, half the fun is, is just hearing about the news, but actually being there is a whole different experience. So, hopefully, we'll get some good commentary from all of them. Yes. That's it, and uh, and and of course uh, we're going to be out there, and hopefully your you our listeners will uh, uh, take part. Um, now, if you have a comment or question, oh, we, you know, as I said, we're always making changes to the website. So uh, if you go uh, up there now, if you go to computeramerica.com and you want to uh, join us in our, our chat room, uh, it's real simple. Uh, just go to our homepage at computeramerica.com, and you'll see the second selection on the menu is the show lounge slash chat and you can either click that or hover over it and you can go to the full screen chat and you can interact with us that way. Um, also if you uh, want to call us you can. It's 347-884-8881. Uh, That's 347-884-8881. We'll get you on and get you through. Um, however as I said our chat room is there. 
It's real simple to do. It'll when you when you select it, it'll just say want to chat. Put in a username. That's the name you'll be known by when you're in there. And uh, and you can join us in the chat room. And uh, we love to see you in there. And please join us in the Computer America chat room. We have a lot of fun in there. And uh, and uh, again, we can share that with you. Uh, it, since it's a Monday, that means we're going to have not one but two brand new uh, um, uh, news tip bulletins from Marty Winston, uh, one in each hour. So we're looking forward to that. That's all coming up as well. And again, congratulations to our last week uh, 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 winner, our, our um, social media winner, Michael Grammer, who won the Logitech T650 rechargeable wireless glass touchpad from Logitech. Congratulations to him. Yes, and we'll be uh, doing another one this Friday. Uh, a little later on, we'll tell you again how to enter in our contest. We've made it real simple now uh, to do. Uh, we, we're using all the social media outlets uh, for you to register, and it's real simple. We make it real simple at ComputerAmerica.com. We'll, we'll tell you a little bit about that. Uh, if you're new to the show, we'll tell you how to do that. Anything else before uh, we uh, get started with our, our guest uh, this hour, Ben? Uh, any other news? Uh, yeah, I've been using uh, this new case uh, for uh -huh. our longer term listeners. Uh, we had a company on called Kiasi. Uh -huh. They uh, they're a company who makes all the you know different peripherals, and they have a battery powered case that actually extends the life of your smartphone. Yes. So uh, I, I've been using that for a bit, and I guess we'll talk about that a little bit in the second hour as well. Yeah, a very cool case. Yeah, they sent a couple of them over to us, and uh, uh, yeah, um, it does extend the battery and has a whole bunch of nice features to it. Okay, well then, uh, well if nothing else, let's uh, get started to our guest. And uh, our guest is from a company called Yappen, Y A P P N. I uh, hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, according to them, Yappen is a real-time multilingual company that amplifies brand and social messaging expands online commerce, and provides customer support by globalizing these experiences with its proprietary approach to language. Uh, through its real-time multilingual amplification platform, Yappen ex eliminates the language barrier. That's right, it eliminates the language barrier. That's easier said than done. Allowing the free flow of communications in 67 languages. Wow. Now, here with us to explain is Yappen's CEO and founder, uh, David Lukacs. Uh, David, welcome into Computer America. How are you? Good, Craig. Thank you very much, and thank you, Ben. Yeah. Glad you could join us. Thank Absolutely. you. So, uh, you know, I had my introduction, uh, and uh, I'm not sure how accurate this is. So why don't, you, why don't you tell our listeners in your own words exactly what Yappen's all about? Well, Yappin, thanks, Craig. Yappin is really quite simple. What Yappin does is it eliminates the language barrier and creates a high level of respect between the seller and the buyer. Eliminating the language barrier means that you can buy in your language, I can sell in your language, regardless of the language that each of us are actually working in. So it's very, very simple um, and easy to apply. You know, I'm slapping myself. I just got it. Yapping. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. We, we're right. yapping. We're yapping along. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Got it. And here I thought it was an acronym for something. You know. Okay. No. Yapping. All right. Well, so uh, that's a nice overview. But but can you you know talk to a little bit about how the, is is the is the end user or, or aware of yapping even, or is this something that's working in the background and uh, I don't even have to know about it? I mean, how, do, how does it play into this uh, translation? Well, you know, it's uh, we're simple um, and invisible. So to the user, we're likely invisible. Uh, a company would install our software and our services. We're all cloud-based and have been since inception. In fact, we, uh, we're working on the Microsoft Azure platform, so we're global in nature, have a large footprint, and uh, the software is installed um, or our APIs are enabled with the seller and or the social media company, and the user, I don't think, ever sees what we do. 
All right, so you're primarily B2B then. You're, 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 you're not a consumer, oriented. You're, you're more of a business oriented company, correct? We are now. We started off as a consumer company in our early stages about five years ago. We actually, um, uh, in, in the predecessor to what became Yappin, we actually hold the Guinness World Record for the most nationalities in an online chat. So we did start in the consumer world. But we quickly realized that where the the economy was for us was by powering companies to be able to work with their constituents so that they could break the language barrier. So yes, we are a B2B, ultimately a B2B to C. Okay. So, you know, again, the first thing that comes to my mind is when I think of things like this is like Google Translate. I mean, I love that app. It's something in my iPhone. Um, I was using it just the other day. It's amazing. I can. Uh, I saw a sign. It was actually in Spanish, and I and I and I just held up my iPhone to the sign, and I literally watched the sign more for change into the English language. You know, uh, it was very cool. Or, or or speak, and of course you can speak to people. But but that's again a, more of a consumer product. Uh, you, would you compare yourself with the, the technology behind Google Translate, or how are you different? Well, you know, Google's an amazing company and, and uh, Microsoft offers similar products. Um, when it comes to websites um, and translating websites, that, that's easy. Google does that really well. And we don't really work in that realm. Where we work is really behind the firewall with data. So for those listeners that you have out there that are in the business of, of working on data sets and working with stores, it's really simple. If your customers can't buy in their language, they're likely not going to buy. If they can't find social media in their language, they're not going to talk about your product. And if they can't be serviced in their language, they're not going to be able to ask you questions. Ultimately, what we do is help the cash register ring. And to do that, we have to be down behind the firewall. Google generally operates at the surface level. And we operate you know, in, with the ability to change um, currencies change the ability to flow language in a store a checkout things where you normally if you aren't speaking English will have a problem hmm. and so and, and uh, like of course because uh, computer America first of all second of all you know uh, I only speak English and, and blah 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 but is your company mainly focused on uh, you know uh, English speaking companies getting the you know the different customers that are out there like uh, let's say you want to get you know more Germans more Chinese more Brazilian like are, are you trying to get English speaking customers or is this you know or if let's say a Chinese company approached you would would uh, would they be able to integrate this so that English speaking customers uh, you know could use their site Ben, that's a great question. Um, let me start by saying that if you look at the stats today online, and Internet World stats is easy for all of us to go to, you'll find out that there's 3 billion people online today. And of the 3 billion online, approximately 20... 3 to 25 percent actually surf in English. The balance of the world does not surf in English. And in fact, English is the eighth, number eighth fastest growing language in the world. So we're not focused primarily only on companies that want to reach a global audience from English, but recently we were in China and what we realized in talking to Chinese e-commerce providers that it's, they're not you know, tuned to selling in English from a standpoint of needing our services because they learn English in school. They want to sell to the Russians, the Spanish, the Malay, the Thai, the Japanese, the Koreans. They don't learn that language or those languages. So for our standpoint, we're really agnostic from one language to the other. We have 67 languages. If you want to sell in Swahili and reach a Czech audience, that's what we do. I mean, in November of this year, just to give you an example, we did an event with IMDb and um, uh, Lionsgate, and we did a, an online Twitter event for Keanu Reeves for his movie John Wick. And when we did the event, what we found was only 38% of the people that showed up were native English speakers, and Slovenia was the largest language participation on that chat. And you go, do things go viral in Slovenia? I mean, it doesn't, may not make sense to us, but the world really is ripe for English and non-English content to communicate um, equally or with the same level of respect. It was an interesting movie, by the way. Uh, I don't know if you saw it, John Wick. I mean, I felt so bad for that little dog. <laughs> 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 really. Uh, so, 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 
But they, yeah, I, it, it it just seems to a lot of people, especially you know to to our audience, because you know we we did start in America, uh, and, and you know even we do uh, have listeners in India and Africa and you know sure. China, like we we have listeners all over, and you know we we of course have to take it on, you know take on the fact that they know English and you know uh, we can't exactly translate you know what we do to you know Swahili, but uh, I guess when you're a company, you know. You're able to actually translate any of the languages that that you uh, use to any other language, because because a lot of different uh, we've had a lot of translation uh, you know programs on, and they only do you know to and from certain ones, but you can actively do all of them to each other. Yes, that's and and uh, how, five years. I mean, how did you build up that kind of database and build up that level of sophistication? You know, that quick. Like, uh, do, do you guys have a background in this kind of thing? Well, we we actually have a background in 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 computer security and and banking technology at an early stage. So we understood a lot of the nuances. And and as as I said, we were there when the cloud came about. In, in fact, I was at Microsoft's PDC event when they actually announced Azure. So um, our team is really well healed, and uh, we have several teams around the world that we work with. And really, it was the ability to quickly and effectively um, understand the rules that go into language. Now, um, I won't say we're perfect because we're not perfect. Uh, I don't think you can be perfect because the in for output to be perfect, input would need to be perfect. And we've all seen social media, and social media, generally speaking, isn't great. But what we do is we have the ability to take in language, clean it up, process it, understand it, understand the context of a conversation and uh, and uh, once we do that we can make the fidelity as we call it of that event much higher so we're we're replacing human intervention in real time so there's no cut and paste which Google sometimes uh, and Bing have you do everything flows seamlessly and uh, yes we can do almost any language to almost any language okay so that that opens up a, a bunch of uh, questions for me and, and to start off with that obviously um, anyone who's used a, a translation program realizes that there are some fundamental problems in when you're dealing from tra in translation from one language to another, uh, in, and especially when you're dealing with conversations. First of all, there are colloquialisms, uh, expressions in one language which actually have no bearing or meaning in another language. Uh, you know, uh, there it can be it can get pretty uh, you know uh, abbreviations that people make up on the spot. Right, exactly. So, how do you deal with things like that? Especially if you're in, in in dealing with businesses and you want you want accuracy in that translation. I would think that's important. Um, how do you deal with with these anomalies that occur from one language going into another and back? Well, again, great question. Um, let's start with the fact that we have. What we focus on is what we call lexicons or silos of words that cover industry, um, normal everyday terms, um, common misspellings, and then we get drive down to the business's particular lexicon. So let's say your business name is Extreme. That's the name of your business, but it's not start, doesn't start with an E. It starts with an X. You may never want that to translate. So that goes on to your own do not translate list. Mm -hmm. So we work with each business to understand their anomalies and they can build a root list lexicon. Plus, as we build more and more stores and more and more platforms, we have all these other lexicons that all work together in harmony to create a better experience. So we already understand that that problem exists and we already have um, lead speak filters and dirty word filters and all the goodies that you might otherwise think um, that someone could get away with. But again, we're not dealing with consumers. We're dealing with businesses to businesses to consumers. So that language, generally speaking, when you're designing a store, you're generally following a set of rules. When you're doing customer service, you're generally speaking to your client in a professional manner. It's not, hey, buddy, what's up? It's, hello, can I help you? Right. So there are very, very... Uh, a, l a large number of commonalities that we can cover um, in multiple languages effectively and efficiently. Of course, but, but uh, and, and I and I certainly understand that. So uh, you do have uh, profane words, so you have filters in that. You you want to, now is it up to the company to to turn that on or turn that off, or is that something that you just 
that default that you just have as default? Well, we, we let our clients know that we have that. It's about a 5,000-word filter, and, and several of our entertainment companies, um, when we were doing chats with them originally, um, helped us build that. And uh, some of the words um, are very, very interesting. I thought I was quite knowledgeable, but as it turns out, I've learned by the time I'm in my 50s, I really how much I don't know, the old Mark Twain story. Um, but I think most clients would appreciate the fact that we're um, uh, we're not trying to remove language, we're just trying to make it professional. And we have a number of clients in the streetwear where it is much more colloquially and uh, in in language and certain terminology, and we can handle that very efficiently. Uh, and what about expressions like you know? Oh, uh, you don't want to let the cat out of the bag. You know. Now, obviously, we don't understand what that is in English, but in in French or so other that that there's no um, or, or you have to. You find alter you know. In other words, you take the implied meaning of the expression and then translate it into something that that would you know you don't want to give that away or you would change it. How would you? How do you deal with that? Well, again, from a professional um, uh, business approach, you're probably not going to use that term. But let me give you an example. Let's say we're talking about surfing and it's board shorts, okay? And the term board shorts, you would not want that terminology to translate into cardboard tiny little pants so <laughs> right so it there are anomalies in every language so if you think of it from a business to business to consumer standpoint we're really dealing with professionals who want to have a professional approach um, in in our casual chat it is in fact casual so if two people are having a conversation in social media about something I'm sure certain terminology will not translate mm. Okay. So uh, one thing that might might clear us up a little bit is uh, what exact or what exact form does Yappin kind of take? Do you? Uh, I think everyone's been to an online retail where a little box pops up and it's like, "Hi, uh, you know, a, a representative saying by to help you. Do you need anything?" Like, it, it, is that you guys? Um, in in some cases it could be, but let me start over. What happens is, um, so Ben, your your computer is set to Spanish. Okay, and you're right now in the United States. If our clients offer a Spanish solution, you will only see a Spanish solution. We'll know okay. that you're in the United States, but that your browser is set to Spanish. You'll get a complete Spanish experience mm. in, in everything that that, cus that business does for you, whether it's, it's displaying some of their social media, whether it's displaying um, their catalog and their checkout, or whether it's customer support. So, so it's a very seamless experience. We cover all those areas. We enable all those areas. We don't necessarily provide them at root services because each client has its own service. Yeah. But yet, let's say you picked up your computer. You're in the United States, and your computer is set to Spanish, and you go to France. So when you go to France, you'll still get a Spanish experience, but maybe that customer is running a deal in France. You'll get that French. You'll get that deal from France as a location, but you'll still get a Spanish experience. The idea is to give you a respectful experience using the customer's root services. We ride on top as an invisible layer. That makes perfect sense. And and, and I guess you said it there in the middle that uh, people are identified by what language, you know, by, by of course which language, which then gives them a different experience. Uh, I guess by whatever language your browser is set to. Yes, we start, but we also we also need to know where your IP is. Because each company ha may have certain things going on from a localization standpoint. The other thing I should mention is, if you're an e-commerce, if you're a company that uses e-commerce services, you might have found in the past that if I want an English store, I build an English store. But now I want a Spanish store, so now I have to build a second store. And then I want a German store, so I have to build a German store. So, and then I'm managing three different stores, three different marketing services, three different customer experiences, three different set of inventories. We eliminate all of that. You're running one store and emulating multiple languages to your customer's individual need. That, and, and like that is, first of all, that, that's going to save tons of overhead, tons of time, tons of you know man hours, uh, you know for sure. Uh, but I'm guessing that you, you don't just automatically integrate with just any website. Uh, do, does one have to kind of build one using, let's say, WordPress, and then you integrate with that, or? Like what service to, uh, what services for website development do you guys uh, work with? Okay, first of all, again, we don't translate any websites. Zero. 
we're we're we we really focus on um, marketing, sales, and support. So from a marketing standpoint, we integrate with all social media, 54 different social media networks, and most people don't even know that 54 exist. <laughs> But in some countries, people don't use necessarily Facebook or Twitter. One of the big, um, if you go to China, it might be WeChat. It might be, you know, Renren. Ren. It might be QQ. I mean, there's all kinds of different platforms. Um, so we start at the marketing side. Then we look at e-commerce. For some of our clients, some of our clients have a custom-built solution. And recently, we launched um, um, an app that is native to Shopify. And we'll be launching other apps as we go along so that you'll be able to plug our systems in and our services in based on the e-commerce provider. And then on the customer service side, we work with most of the major customer service technologies to allow our services to ride on top. So we don't work with WordPress. I mean, that's, again, a, more of a Google Translate situation. Mm. We're working where the data is hard, where the word pants really is data. It isn't the word pants. Okay. All right. Um, how long... Does this translation process take? I mean, to change from one language to another. Um, if it's installed, let's say on a Shopify store, uh, you'll never notice it. It it and if you change the languages, it's less than three seconds. So, is, be, so sorry. Is that, so is that when you mean when I go to a I go to a, a European uh, uh, website or something and you know they have the little British flag and you can click it and you can see they have all the different flags or all the different languages. And then you just click it, and then it changes the language. Is that what you're? Is that what you're working with? Nope, not at all. Okay. What happens is, again, as, I, as I explained with Ben, is we're going to deliver to you your language experience as your native opportunity. Yeah. So you're you're likely never going to see a second or third languages because because you want that experience in English or in German or in Spanish. So you're getting that experience. This is so new, n new and and novel. And never has never been done before by any company. So, ultimately, we're not giving you an English experience that's translated into French. We're giving you a French experience, period, or a German experience, period. We're not giving you any other experience. So, if you want to check out because there's a selector switch, oh, I'd now like to see this in English. It's about a three-second change. But if we're delivering in your language of choice, we've just we've just basically achieved that respect barrier. Okay, so can you name a couple of companies that are using your technology? Um, well, we work with uh, uh, you know, this small entertainment company called Disney. Oh and yeah, several, <laughs> I'm sure them. you've heard of them before. Yeah. And uh, we've worked with um, a number of their divisions. Recently, we did a major event for them with um, uh, a launch of a live event in April for Star Wars, and that was broadcast around the world in 67 languages. So, um, yeah, we've worked with companies like Oakley. We, oh, wait, um, wait, stop for a second. So let's talk about this Disney thing. So uh, I'm watching this promotion for Star Wars. So are you saying that when I was watching this promotion, no matter where I was, I would see it in the language, uh, the, the, you know, from if I was in France, I would be watching it in French. Uh, French people would be watching it in French. If you're in you know, uh, Germany, German people would be watching it in German. And... and and that's it. We don't even realize it's being translated. Is that well? The answer is we don't translate voice. Um, we have investments in the voice business. So you were seeing a live broadcast from Anaheim, California, mm -hmm. and that broadcast was um, beamed around the world. And we did all the closed captioning. So uh, and and where whatever your browser was set to was the language you received closed captioning in. When you say browser is set to, I mean, maybe I've just never played around. So are you saying every browser has a a a, a in the preference to somewhere to change the basic language. Yep, yeah. So if 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 your if your keyboard set to Chinese, um, uh, simplified or traditional Chinese, you're not likely using an English browser. Yeah, I got it. And and remember, if I go back to those stats, you know, 72 percent of people around the world do not surf in English. That's 2.2 billion people. And this year alone, um, uh, eMarketer estimates. That e-commerce will be about 1.7 trillion dollars. Of that, less than 25 percent will be done in English countries, major English countries, which is the UK, Australia, um, Canada, and the US. So you so, know, it, it's really a growing area. So much my theory that if you uh, if you speak English, you know, <laughs> English is the uh, you're, you're fairly well. I guess it, it, if more companies use you know Yappin, then that theory still holds true. 
Yeah, I think when you look at it, the the challenges. Let me give you an example. Um, um, I'm not sure that you know your hockey fans, but I'm going to use a hockey example, which is probably a lot of the listeners would would really uh, appreciate. So let's say you're a fan a fan of Alexander Ovechkin from the Washington Capitals, mm -hmm. and you know he played for the Russian Olympic team. And let's say you wanted his Russian Olympic jersey, and you're a big fan, and it was only available on a Russian web store. Now, you might be able to pick the image because you know there's only two images home or away. You might be able to figure out size because it's a progressive chart. You might be able to figure out quantity and you might be able to convert price. So you get it into a shopping cart. How do you get it out? You can't understand the language. What some of our clients, and they're large, I can't mention them by name, but large major global client groups, they have found that if language is an issue up to 90%, almost 90, but 86%. So 86% of their sales fall off when language is an issue. So while people are all focused on analytics to increase sales, we're really leaving the language issue off the table. And if I can if I can add more languages, then I'm beating my competition to the punch and offering more opportunities to sell my products. Well, I'll tell you, uh, uh, it's really interesting, uh, David. And um, uh, one of those little things that that I, I guess in the in the future is really going to make the internet work. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and we won't even know you're there. <laughs> I hope so. Hey, David, I want to thank you so much for being with us here tonight on the show. Uh, again, you can check it out yappn.com or go to computeramerica.com. We have the link to the app and the website. David, thanks so much for being with us here tonight. It was very enlightening. Thank you, Craig. Thank you, Ben. And I understood every word you said. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Take care. Have a good, have a good, good evening. Night. You good too. Night. All the best. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. You're listening to the Computer America Show. Uh, ben and I are going to be uh, – got a brand new News Tips Bulls review from Marty Winston coming up as well. And we have lots of news from E3. It's just around the corner. Uh, we'll be right back. You're listening to the Computer America Show. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-866-663-MYTV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. So, disable the cable and get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-866-663-MYTV right now to sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and up to four rooms. And there's no equipment to buy. That includes your free HDTV upgrade, your free DVR upgrade, and your free professional installation. And the best part, the pristine digital picture and sound. Call 1-866-663-MYTV. So, what are you waiting for? Pull out your major credit or debit card. Call 1-866-663-MYTV. 1-866-663-MYTV. Disable the cable, cut costs, and get more. Call 1-866-663-MYTV. 1-866-663-MYTV. Hi, this is Craig Crossman, host of the Computer America Show. You have important meetings to schedule. Your company's getting ready for its IPO. And you're in charge of the PTA fundraiser this month. So how do you coordinate everyone to be available at the same time? Are you still using emails, phone calls, even text messages to schedule meetings with a group of people? How's that working out for you? <laughs> That's so great, huh? It's a fact that every day, millions of people suffer from scheduling headaches. Well, with Doodle, scheduling meetings with a group of people is quick and easy. With Doodle, you can easily propose available times to each member. Each one checks off the times that they are available, and then you simply pick the time that works best for the group, all in an easy-to-read display that integrates with your existing calendar. Nothing could be more simple. Give Doodle a try for free, and like millions of Doodle users, you'll truly see how easy it is to find the perfect date and time for all your meetings. That's www.doodle.com. I hope you're old enough for this next bit. It's Marty Winston with a News Tips Bulletin Review for Computer America, this time the Elevate Grill. It's roughly the size and shape of a carry-on bag with a broad, flat base and a big square handle up top, but this case can pack a lot of heat because Elevate Grill is a folding, 
Totable Two Burner Gas Grill. It uses propane in a bottle. The 16.4 ounce canister you may see on a torch used to solder pipes, for example. When you separate the handles and swing them down, they become support legs for the two flat grill sections that hinge down to horizontal. Behind their grates are square burners with a AAA cell powered ignition spark gap on each. The gas bottle connects anew for each use and stows inside between uses, an arrangement enforced by a separate regulator connection designed to not travel well when it's connected. Each of the two grates is roughly a foot square, so if you're feeding one to six people, you may be able to cook it all in one pass. Bottom line, the Elevate Grill is a cool new way to make gas grilling a portable feast. Marty Winston with the News Tips Bulletin Review for Computer America. Welcome back to the Computer America Show. Here, 33 minutes past the hour. Wow. Uh, yeah, and uh, you know, in, in the first uh, segment of the show, we had on Yappin. They are a great language solution uh, for businesses that really, uh, I want to say integrates, but doesn't even integrate. Uh, just makes the entire uh, process of having multiple language support seamless you know uh it uh, doesn't matter what language you have what language you need doesn't matter uh yappin i believe you know we covered it pretty good will uh will be able to cover you in in terms of uh you know getting customers you know in and out mm -hmm. and just you know an overall happy experience they, they seem like a really cool product yes very much so very and much so. again thanks to, for them to uh, being with us here in that uh, segment um well, uh, I, I think, you know, we're on the cusp of uh, E3, and we have a lot of news stories that we'd like to talk about. And um, I think that... Uh, we Although, should... before we get to that... Yes. Uh, I have this case here. Oh, yeah. Tell us about that. This is this was Kiyasi? Yeah, uh, this was a, a Kiyasi. Uh, a Ki, Kai, whatever. Kiyasi. Kiyasi. <laughs> yep. And uh, just pulled my video here. Okay, so... Uh, about a month and a half ago, two months ago, we had a company on Kiyasi. Uh, they make all sorts of different cases. They make pens. They make laser pointers. They make uh, pretty much all the office supplies that you could ever need, as well as uh, cases for phones and tablets. Very, very professional looking, very, very sleek looking. And here was one of them that I'm actually using right now. It, uh, it replaced my good old trusty uh, uh, OtterBox. But uh, that one had gotten beaten up and ran over just one too many times. <laughs> so here's one that probably won't survive a a truck running over it. But this is the case in question. Sorry for the little bit of granular, you know, granular stuff. Oh. But anyways, case fits the uh, fits the iPhone nicely. Top comes off just like that. Huh. You know, slips right in. And the true little nugget is this little guy right here. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 and by the way, this whole review, uh, you should definitely check out our video because I'm going to be showing, you know, showing the actual case. Sorry, people who are only listening to the audio, but for the video, uh, you know, this this part of the show is for mainly geared towards the video. Anyways, mm -hmm. this little guy right here, it's a uh, it's a lightning connector, yeah, like a 13 pin light, light, lightning connector, suitable for all iPhones uh, five fives and ups, mm -hmm. and it uh, you slide your phone right in just like that and it actually plugs right into the little connector ah. and what that does as soon as you get it all you know suited up just like you would fits just like a normal phone case adds just the tiniest bit of bulk uh you know re really really thin really really soft and such but the cool part is this down here little button and yeah that little button is actually the power button and let's say you have your phone on, you're going, and it's you know down to 50%. I actually have mine charged at 100 for a change. But anyways, let's say it's down to 50%. Let's say it's down to 20%. Let's say it's about to die. Uh, plug into the case. So this is button back here. You press it. The little lights come on, and the phone starts charging immediately. That is so cool. As, as long as you have it in the case, the phone is charging. And it's uh, it does get a little hot. Because let's face it, it's uh, you know power is being transferred, and that produces heat. So it, it may heat up just a little bit in your pocket, but it's not like you know you. It, it's actually it's a uh, it's a little bit bulkier than most cases, and that actually helps with the heat because it doesn't get as hot. So 
uh, yeah, you turn it on, the, the little blue lights kind of flash. There are four indicator lights, and it's, uh, it will show you, you know, how much battery is left. That's you know, right. four, four, three, two, one. And I've noticed that I can go from about 20% all the way back up to about 90%, and then the phone is good to go on its own, again, from 90 to zero. So it's, uh, I wouldn't say doubles flat out, but it definitely extends the life of your phone by at least uh, about four hours of moderate use. Very, very nice. And, and and it has some other features that you didn't point out. Uh, it has its own little kickstand too, right? Oh, yeah, that, that little guy. Uh, see, my particular case, I don't know if I just don't have nails and this is really hard, but uh, yeah, it's kind of hard to get out for me. But yeah, that little kickstand right there, it you know slips right into the case. It's You can barely even notice it. But yeah, you kick it out and yeah, it can rest on a table just like that. So you can great for watching, uh, you know, watching. Yeah, video. it's a landscape uh, uh, kickstand. So if you yeah. watch the video, you can just put it down. You can sit there and watch it. So that's a nice little feature too. So it's a uh, now the what the face though. In other words, the, there's nothing protecting the glass itself, uh, or do, do they have something else for that? Some cases come with uh, you know some kind of little film or or what have you. This is simply just the rubber case for the phone. So it's like that's literally all of it. Okay. Uh, although Kyle did send a couple of the. Uh, a couple of their screen protectors, which I don't really need because I've already installed one, but, uh, you know, they have them. They're like three bucks. Even if you aren't using one of the cases, you should definitely go pick up a screen protector. It saves you all the headaches from getting scratches and nicks on your screen, but, you know, use one of those and use this case mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, you're going to be good to go. Would their screen protector work with this case as well? You could have them well, both. The screen protectors, like seriously, as soon as you put them on, they, you kind of forget they're there. Like I, like I have one on my phone right now. Yeah. Like you, you, you know, I you can't know it's there. No, you can't. Okay. So it would work with the case anyway. Okay. But if it works if, with anything. If you mix it or something, you can peel that screen protector off and then, and then you have your glass protected. Exactly. Very, very nice. Okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, yeah. And, and again, that was a uh, Kyasi. They, they were kind enough to send us, you know, two of these cases. Uh, you know, might try to twist Craig's arm into sending away one as a prize on the show. We'll do that, uh, you know, some other time, uh, you know, when we have enough chance to play with it. But they also sent us a couple pens, uh, you know, that also have built-in laser pointers. So for you cat fans, they have those too. Um, but yeah, no, they their their products are, again, you know, mid-range prices. Like they're not the cheapest I've ever seen because those are, you know, just quite frankly of bad quality. And these guys aren't the most expensive because those are outrageous. But they, you know, Kasi, I believe, strikes a very, very nice middle ground. Yeah. Well, let's face it. There, there, there's a, there's a whole cottage industry of cases around the smartphones today. And, For sure. And 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 you can get them as incredibly cheap, and you can get them incredibly expensive. I mean, you can buy you know twenty four carat. You know, solid gold cases for your smartphone. I mean, I diamond encrusted cases. I've seen they cost. They like, make those. They do make that, and it's 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 uh, people like that want the bling for their phones. They 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 put put into one of those. So you can uh, you can spend a whole bunch of money. Uh, but when it comes down to functionality, and something that, uh, that yeah, the, you yeah. know, uh, I I've seen a lot of cases. We we get a lot of cases here, and it's it's kind of hard to to do something interesting with a phone case. Because let's face it, 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 it protects it from when you drop it. It doesn't break. Okay, that's a good case. Uh, but this one had the built-in battery yeah. that adds, you know, multiple hours onto your phone, and I thought that was awesome. So uh, since you have been using it, uh, have you noticed uh, that that uh, one charge goes further? I mean, have you actually experienced that? Uh, one thing that I've learned to do is you charge your phone separately because. I don't know what the circuitry is between the battery in the phone case and, and the phone, but the charging time, it's it's much slower than from my computer because I have a dedicated charging USB port mm -hmm. uh, you know, that came out on my motherboard, mm -hmm. and that's a lot faster. This is much slower, but the cool thing, like, so you charge your phone first, and then you charge your case second. Oh, and, and by the way, uh, just like you plug your phone into your computer, you plug your case into your computer by the same cord. Ah, so, uh, you know, that's how you charge the case. Anyways, charge the phone, then charge the case. 
And then, hey, whenever you run, you know, whenever you feel like you're running low, 50%, 20%, 10%, uh, turn on and your your phone instead of going down starts you know charging right back up. What about overnight? See, I typically charge my phone overnight before I go to sleep. I, t- I plug it into the dock and then and and then overnight. And when it comes when I wake up in the morning, this was helpful for me because I use my phone throughout the day. You know, uh, uh, I, I use it to play music. I use it to watch videos. I use it to surf the internet. Mm-hmm. And I found like my my phone was really struggling by about the midnight one o'clock two o'clock time. <laughs> Huh. That it's uh you know it it was running dead and I had to stop using it and you know and just leave it alone and plug it into my computer. With this, it's easily makes it throughout the day. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. Okay. Because again, oh. it, it 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 charges you know more than half the battery. Yeah. Well, that's good. Okay. All right. So again, Kiasi and the and again, great we're... for students, travelers, just people who who want longer battery lives. And honestly. They're, you know, they make other pro- you know, like other people make products to charge your phone, you know, quick and easy. But this one is built into a case, so it doesn't get much easier than that. No, it doesn't, and it doesn't make your phone much bulkier either. That's it's nice. Just a little bit, just a little bit. But hey, uh, that's something that I feel most people can live with. Absolutely. All right. Uh, well, that said, uh, and, uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this this uh, tonight's uh, review of Computer America you know, swag that we get, uh, in the coming days, we'll be also reviewing another product. That's right. And, uh, we'll also be uh, putting that up as well. So, uh, we're going to try to do uh, product reviews on a more regular basis here. On yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Okay. Well, uh, we st- we still have time uh, to do a couple of news stories. So I say, let's do some computer news. Okay. All right. All right. Let's do it. <laughs> Tonight's computer and technology news is brought to you by Slimware Utilities, the official optimization software of Computer America. You can visit them at slimwareutilities.com to clean, speed up, and optimize your Windows system for free. That's right. Everything at slimwareutilities.com, completely free. Download them all. You'll be happy that you did, and you'll thank us for it. It's slimwareutilities.com. Why don't you take the lead story, Ben? All right. Yeah, sure. I'll take the first one. Um, I think I'm going to lead off with this one. Okay. E3 has been going on, like we said earlier. And it's only been one day. They've only had one day of full festivities. And it's uh, Microsoft came out. PlayStation came out. They both have some big announcements. We'll be talking about some of those. Again, we'll be talking about them in some detail. But really, we'll, we'll get the in-depth stuff from uh, you know from our colleagues over at Popzara mm-hmm. because they're actually out at E3. In fact, at this video, if you look in the bottom left, you know that one little round head. Yes, that's actually Josh Boykin. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no. Uh, again, if you're watching the video, we highly recommend the video tonight. Uh, if you're watching the video, we're gonna show a demonstration that they showed out at E3 of Minecraft, and it's using the Hololens. That's again the augmented reality headset that Microsoft has made, and here they're 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 kind of showing how you can play Minecraft up on any surface on any wall. It projects a a monitor size image, although monitor of course could be up to you know 60, 70, 80 inches on any you know wall, and it projects that through the whole lens, and you can move that wherever you want. It kind of shows how there's nothing really there. It's just it's just for you. But then they show something really, really cool because we've all seen that kind of technology before. But then the gentleman kind of stands up and he wants to move the Minecraft game. Craig, are you watching? I'm watching it. Okay, this is awesome. He moves the Minecraft game to the table and the Minecraft world actually builds itself on the table. (laughs) And that is fully rendered. The, his entire Minecraft, uh, uh, you know, building is, is rendered around his character. His characters are there. He can uh, interact with it. It's just a new way to play Minecraft as if you're some kind of weird overlord. Wow! Look at that. that is and a- he can navigate throughout. He, he, he can uh, obviously the the render distances are you know kind of tight, but really you can you know kind of stick your head in there and look inside of buildings through walls. Just a very, very neat tech demo. If we were wondering, you know, uh, how is Minecraft gonna 
you know, prove prove itself uh, useful. Mm -hmm. Because again, uh, Microsoft purchased uh, Minecraft for about two billion dollars, and most of that went to the lead developer, who of course got like you know one point eight billion dollars out of, out of the deal, and he ran off with it. And everyone said, "Well, Minecraft already made its money. Why would they pay some? You know, why would they pay so much for something like that?" And here, you know, we're we're seeing a tech demo of exactly what is possible with the hololens in minecraft that's amazing yeah it, it's it's like when i say futuristic this is one of the best and is honestly probably going to be one of the best um tech demos out at e3 this year very very cool look at that that is amazing yeah and again if you're watching or if you're listening to us you can watch all of this at computeramerica.com you can watch a live streaming video uh, ben is actually demonstrating it right now so you can see that uh -huh. It's it, it's only uh, you know it, it's Minecraft in only the ways that you wish that you could ever see Minecraft because it, it's it's fully rendered it's active graphics like you know the the lava's still moving the, the the pigs are still walking around mm -hmm. you can actually see other people's avatars uh, you know actively doing stuff but at the same time you're kind of up over top of it looking down as if let's say you had some kind of giant Lego. Uh, uh, you know, play set. Mm, exactly. It's, it, you know, it, it, it's just really, really cool. Yeah. You can pretend you're, you know, what is it? Uh, you're the overlord. The yep. Old. And apparently now they're setting off some TNT in Minecraft and yep, there we go. And it's starting to explode everything. So, <laughs> Hey, it, it's, uh, yeah. it, it looks really like I never really had any interest in Minecraft anymore. I played it for a little while. Uh, you know, that was fun and all. But after seeing this, it's uh oh poor pigs. Anyways, but after seeing this, it's uh new technology. I think is going to breathe is going to breathe life back into Minecraft. Wow, it, it's it's just so cool. And this was demonstrated out at E three uh, yep. today. Yep, just today. Exactly. All right. Well, very cool story. And uh, again, uh, you you again you can watch all of this uh, at uh, at. Uh, computeramerica.com oh, and, and for anyone else who doesn't know uh youtube is actually having a live streaming event the entire time that uh e3 is is going on so you know during during the big announcements or during the uh you know the uh the keynotes youtube will actually be live streaming those and then also you know during the downtime they'll be streaming uh tech demos they'll be streaming uh game uh sneak peeks and trailers De definitely a nice resource if you aren't it i'm sorry if you weren't able to make it out to e3 uh check out youtube as well all right good enough and of course we're going to have coverage there too for our two-hour show oh yeah for sure Absolutely. but uh, really it's e3 it's electronics entertainment expo <laughs> get as much of it as you can enjoy it this is nerd mecca this is awesome there it is and speaking of a uh, nerd mecca, um, uh, this next story from Maximum PC, uh, Kevin Parrish writes that Microsoft evidently has opened its doors to backward compatibility. Uh, in other words, the Xbox 360 compatibility now is available on the Xbox One. This is huge news. Um, and this is one of the other uh, juicy news nuggets coming out of Microsoft's E3 presentation today was the announcement that the xbox one console will be backward compatible with a number of xbox 360 games coming this fall okay so now there is a there is a list uh of backward compa compatibility games uh, they're saying some of them like a mass effect uh perfect dark uh, perfect dark zero uh, viva pinata uh geometry wars evolved oh, viva pinata the 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 uh, inaugural game is perfect. Yeah, uh, and 16 additional titles were mentioned. By the time the service will open its doors to all Xbox One owners, there should be well over 100 compatible titles. But unfortunately, there is a catch. Okay, so for disc-based games, remember those? Yeah, the <laughs> disc-based games, yeah. Users must download the entire game to the console's hard drive. Okay, even more, uh, these customers will also need to keep the uh, disc handy as they're needed in order to play the associated game. Uh, compatible titles that are already downloaded will show up in the program's ready to install section. 
But the good news is that Xbox One owners won't be required to purchase the digital edition if they already own the disc-based copy. You don't have to buy it twice, in other words. You don't have to do that. Uh, the backward compatibility program is also free and will store our uh, achievements, uh, DLC, and game saves in the cloud. Uh, other features include Windows 10 streaming, game DVR. I assume that's the ability to rewind and look at your game at play like on a, you would on a, uh, a DVR. Yep. And, and the ability to take screenshots, too. All right. Now, according to the star story, that they're saying this is a really uh, big move from Microsoft and the Xbox One, as this particular feature that we're talking about will open up a whole new uh, and familiar library for Xbox One owners that, that was previously not available to them. Um, now, Microsoft tried its hand with backward compatibility in the past by including this feature in the Xbox 360, so the Xbox One announcement shouldn't be a shocker to most Xbox brand gamers. Um, yep, it's uh, I, I I remember when the Xbox like I had the original Xbox and the Xbox 360 came out, and I believe their terms were like any game that had been released a year prior to the Xbox 360, yeah, uh, would have been compatible with the Xbox, mm -hmm. so, or, or no, no, the other way around. Anyways, uh, so they're they're trying this out. About a hundred titles. It's not going to be a blanket. Every game you own for the Xbox 360 now works with the Xbox One. They have to uh, hand they have to hand pick and choose, and then take time to integrate it. And just like they said, bad news, you're going to have to download the game in its entirety onto the Xbox hard drive. Which again, it's it, it's bigger. I mean, I've seen some Xbox that are you know two three terabytes, but heck, you can't download a hundred games. No, in that space as well as have room for you know let's say you have movies and music and blah 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 blah. Anyways, you have all that stuff on there. Your hard drive is going to fill up really really fast. So it, it's going to be uh, probably on like a game by game basis. Like if you just really really wanted to play the original uh, uh, Mass Effect games, like you can do that. But you're going to want to you know clean them off your hard drive because they're going to take up a lot of room. So. Uh, it's it, it's not it's not a blanket solution, but it's their olive branch and saying, okay, we have the technology and we're gonna try to help you guys. Here's uh you know here's some here's here's some backward compatibility, mm -hmm. and yes, uh, you know Fort in the chat room is right. This should have been a feature when they first launched it. The, this you know uh, kind of thinks that people had to wait a year or more just to you know just to get news of this. But hey, you know better late than never and better than nothing. Yes, exactly. And uh, obviously, when you finish playing the game, you don't have to leave it on there. You can clear it off so you can bring back some hard drive space. And, uh, you know, not everything has to be stored on the hard drive. Uh, although, you, you, when you start seeing things like this, you, you're going to start wishing for the uh, generation of petabyte drives. You know? <laughs> so, uh, can't wait. I can't wait for that. All right. So, uh, there you go. So, that's that story. Uh, do we. All right. Uh, let, let's see. Next one. Next one. Next one. Um. <laughs> all right. Well, here's one that's uh, slightly related because it, it was mentioned briefly in uh in, in the previous story about the whole compatibility thing, and that was uh Windows 10 streaming. So here's an article from Engadget, uh, Andrew Tarantola, and uh, yeah, this is again out from E3 today. You can now, or, or I'm sorry, now you can stream Xbox One games to Windows 10 computers. Very nice. Very nice. There aren't any Windows 10 computers out yet, uh -huh. but hey, you know, still cool. All right, so uh, let's see. Uh, Microsoft announced that starting to, I'm sorry, starting today, Xbox One users running Windows 10, I'm, I'm guessing they mean the beta, uh, and who are members of the preview program will be able to try the will be able to try the company's new game streaming feature, and it does just what it sounds like. It lets you stream your console games to a remote computer, and uh, the, the the feature actually mirrors the full console experience. Uh, uh, you know, and you can also access the home screen and all the apps. So let's say you have, uh, or, I'm sorry, let's say you want to talk to all of your uh, friends 
mm -hmm. know, on Xbox. Before, you could only do that through the Xbox, but now you can do it through your computer. That's nice. Uh, it, you'll, you'll be able to virtually access uh, pretty much everything that the Xbox One has, including the title, save for ones that require the Kinect or other specialized hardware, mm -hmm. i.e., think Rock Band, because, mm -hmm. of course, you're not going to have those peripherals for your computer. Uh, yeah, so you'll, uh, you'll also need to have the same Xbox Live account set up on both console and PC and a gold subscription. And uh, yeah, and if you want to hop into a multiplayer game or use voice chat, you'll also need the gold subscription. Right. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's uh, today, if you, have, if you have Windows 10 beta and you have the, uh, the preview mm -hmm. for Xbox One, then hey, you, you can start doing it today. Well, and uh, Windows 10 isn't even here yet, but uh, when it's, no, but it's uh, this is big news for gamers because this is bridging the gap between PC gamers and console gamers. Right. Uh, well, you know, again, we have a lot more stories coming up here. A lot of them having to do with uh, uh, E3. Uh, we've got a, a Halo 5 uh, story we're going to be talking about as well. And also Cortana, of course, is still in the news. Uh, we have a couple stories. Steam also in the news. We have a story about Steam. Uh, uh, and uh, Mass Effect, uh, some more news about that. Uh, all coming up in the Computer America show uh, in the second hour of the program. Uh, again, I just want to let you know that, uh, you know, check out ComputerAmerica.com. Check out our website. Uh, we have our, all of our contests are up. And there are social media contests, so you don't need to um, register like you used to have to. Basically, uh, on the right side of every page is those little red charms. Uh, if you click the Facebook, uh, the F for the Facebook one, it'll take you to the uh, Computer America Facebook page. You just have to like it. Uh, go to the <coughs> Twitter page and follow Computer America. Every time you do that, um, you're registered. And you only have to do it once, because once you're following us, you're following us. Or, you know, Facebook is Facebook. You know, you like it. So um, head over to ComputerAmerica.com and check out all the social media. Uh, register for each one, and uh, you're in our weekly drawing that we do every Friday. All right, we're going to just pause for a few moments. You listen to the Computer America Show. More computer and technology news brought to you by Slimware Utilities. We will be right back. Broadcasting live, it's the only national radio talk show on computers to air every weeknight, Computer America. Hosted by national columnist Craig Crossman. The first hour's behind us, but there's still more of tech news, tech talk, and your phone calls. We're being beamed nationwide at ComputerAmerica.com. You got computer problems? Bring them on. You're listening to Computer America. Computers run the world, and we run computers. Call us or send us an email to live at ComputerAmerica.com. Hello and welcome into Hour 2 of the nation's longest-running, nationally syndicated radio talk show on computers. This is the Computer America Show, and I'm your host, Craig Crossman. And I'm your co-host, Ben. And uh, welcome into the second hour of the show. Uh, we are continuing to do computer and technology news, brought to you by Slimware Utilities, the official optimization software of Computer America. If you missed the first hour of the show, we had the uh, CEO and founder of Yappin, uh, David Lukacs, was here with us talking about their very interesting translation service that, for the most part, you don't even know is there. You're just using it when, when you do it. And uh, um, so you can remember, you can always listen to archives of the show at ComputerAmerica.com over and over again. We archive all of our programs, uh, the audio portion, as well as our live Computer America video stream. It's all archived, so you can catch it if you missed uh, any of our past shows. Uh, again, on our new website, ComputerAmerica.com. And you can check all that out for yourself. A lot of feature, new features. Uh, again, we are making little changes. We're updating. We're kind of fine-tuning the website. And, uh, and uh, so we'll do little things from time to time just to get it, uh, you know, get it uh, uh, down. But, you know, I, I think really a website, Ben, is always a work in progress. It's never finished. You know. It's always a work. It, 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 sometimes you see websites, they get stale. And if you work, it, it, I guess it's just like a house because that's what I'm doing in my spare time anyways. Okay. No, but it, it, it's just like working on a house. If you go room by room once a year, change something, update something, it, you'll have a pretty okay website. Mm -hmm. But if you don't do anything for a while, if you let it sit around, it, it's going to start showing its age. So, heck, 
do some pre- do some preventive maintenance. Yeah. Try to update it, make it look nicer, make, you know, streamline it, make it easier to use. And uh, yeah, just a, a website that sits still is not a website that lasts. What generation are we now on our website? This is what the, the fourth generation that we've done, I think. Uh, let's see. You had one and then you used uh, that front page one that was atrocious. And then we <laughs> used Wix one. And now we're on, yes, generation four using WordPress. And we did a number of generations on Wix, too. Um, Okay. All right. Well, uh, uh, we're going to continue doing a computer technology news brought to you by Slimware Utilities, the official optimization software of Computer America. Uh, and in this uh, uh, next story uh, from Maximum PC, we'll get back to E3 because remember, we're going to be covering E3 in quite in depth on Wednesday, this Wednesday show with Pop Sarah Magazine, uh, Nate Evans, and Josh Boyk, and Corey, all of the, the whole gang out there. We're going to be doing a uh, different, they're going to be reporting back for us and talking about what they're seeing out of E3. Uh, and we'll get back to that too. But uh, this was an interesting little story. I thought, um, you know, um, when you go to a bank, uh, I'll do online banking, uh, you uh, usually have to enter a PIN of some sort, you know, a password or PIN number, you know. Uh, and I've always said that a, a PIN is, usually, is, four di- is four digits. And that means with the numbering system. <laughs> Wise you, words, Craig. A pin is usually four digits. Yes, it is, and it is only, so you only have 10,000 possible combinations to, to break the pin. Okay. It's not, it's not like it's billions and millions of them. However, um, it, with this, this uh, system, what they're doing is they're allowing an online banking site is allowing you to trade your pin in for an MOG pass co- code. So basically now, um, you have four little emojis that you can put in. And as you know, emoji. You, yes, you can have emoji. You can have an unlimited number of emojis. So basically that 10,000 numbers is just the scale has gone off the charts. Uh, so you can actually have a lot more codes because now, so having 10 digits to choose from for each digit. Now you have, you know, now you can have uh, no here monkey and watermelon and banana and ninja. Exactly. And according to the story, again, from Paul Ali, he says the security is evolving. He says, you know, we have, you know, biometric logins and retina scans and fingerprints and uh, two-factor uh, authentications. And uh, he says, but when it comes to banking sites, PIN codes are the norm. He says, but maybe not for long. There's a British firm that's letting users of its Android app use a combination of emojis instead of just numbers. Um uh, the company is called Intelligent Environments, and it claims the world's first emoji-only passcode launch and today. And it's more secure and easier to remember than traditional passcodes. Well, I guess I guess smiley face wearing a sunglass and a soccer ball and a pair of scissors. I guess, you know, you could do that. Um, as I mentioned, emoji's passcode is mathematically far more secure than traditional mem- mem- because... There are 480 times more permutations using emojis over traditional four-digit passcodes. Okay. In addition, it will prevent hackers from identifying common and easily obtained numerical passcodes like a date of birth or a wedding anniversary, something like that. People tend to use those. Um, Very true. Yeah. The company says it developed its app in response to research showing that over 25% of, of Britons uh, have forgotten their pins in the past. Okay. Oh, those Britons, so yeah. forgetful. Yeah. Uh, emojis, on the other hand, offer an advantage in that research also shows that humans tend to remember pictures more easily than words or numbers. Uh, so the decision to use emojis uh, also can um, can uh, be about as a way of catering to a younger generation of users. All about that younger generation. Young whippersnapper. We, we're, we're important. <laughs> we... Uh, See, look, the the internet was made by your generation. Uh-huh. It's made for our generation. There you go. Uh, they quoted it. So we've had an input from lots of millennials when we developed the technology. He says, what's clear is that the younger generation is communicating in new ways. Okay. He says, their research shows 64% of millennials regularly communicate using only emojis. What the? Yeah. So they decided to reinvent the passcode for the new generation by developing the world's first Emoji security technology. So there it is. I don't believe that. <laughs> I talked to a lot of people, you know, using text messaging 
And if, if, if someone tried to only talk to me using emojis, I would slap them so fast. Like, <laughs> I get it. They're cute, and you should definitely pepper them in. It makes your reading experience just so much more colorful and, and, and enjoyable. Mm -hmm. But only emojis? I don't know about that. Okay. Well. Hmm. Now it's my turn. Those darn whippersnappers. <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh let's see that was that one uh you know since craig kind of moved off from e3 we'll we'll do a couple stories and then and then we'll come back uh if we have time how about this one this one's really cool well really cool if uh if you're a game of thrones fan game of thrones craig you may not have known this but i believe it was last night the season finale happened no Se season the season five finale uh -huh. Game of Thrones happened last night. Okay. And within eight hours, would you care to guess how many times Game of Thrones was downloaded? And yes, it did break a record. Wow. How many times? It was downloaded, it was downloaded in eight hours 1.5 million times. Wow. And it swelled to over 10 million downloads during the days to come. Wow. That's, Ten million. That's a lot of downloads. That's that's a lot of downloads, and it makes me wonder who the heck is downloading the seat the season finale, and not the rest of them. Mm -hmm. So weird. It's like watching like the last episode of Breaking Bad. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a uh, spoiler. What? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Just get the last one. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Anyway, so the fifth season of Game of Thrones has been most viewed has been the most viewed so far, both through official channels and among pirates. And uh, and again, if, if you haven't seen it, we're not going to do any uh, we're not going to do any spoiler alerts. Mm -hmm. But uh, I heard it lived up to its hype, and the internet is abuzz with the implications that it showed so if you are one of the few lucky people that was able to avoid the uh you know the, the numerous traps online about all the spoilers that have been going around today uh you know lucky you but you should definitely go check it out as soon as possible and uh yeah they they have here uh you know an actual uh swarm record or at least you know, something called a swarm record, it was broken. And at the time, there were 258,000 people sharing a single torrent of the season finale. And 181,000 are sharing a complete copy of the particular torrent, while, while 770,000 or 77,000 of those are still downloading. Yeah. So, like, to say, this, uh, to say Game of Thrones is popular is an understatement, because this is shattering records on legitimate channels and on illegitimate channels both like it, it has the internet in a stranglehold i personally have only seen like the first two seasons i i, I need to do some serious catching up but i don't feel like i'm missing much because again i read the books i'm one of those guys i was like ah the book was better but i never got into game of thrones i watched a couple of episodes and I'm just you should definitely get into it it's it's really re like it's one of the best television shows uh, produced, you know, this year for sure, and in recent history, no doubt, mm -hmm. very, very good. Anywho, uh, me because there's some really good series out there, you know. Oh, it, it blows pretty much anything you you think. It blows it out of the water. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's it's going to be up there with, uh, you know, Breaking Bad. It's going to be up there with Scrubs for comedy. It's going to be up there for Arrested Development. Like, like it's going to be one of the best in the past you know 20 30 years house of cards even better than that huh? even better than house of cards definitely more popular than house of cards in your opinion of course you know no no not in my opinion it's definitely more popular more people are watching it more people are downloading it more people are you know talking about it game of thrones has a stranglehold on the internet right now it's uh it's just so hot right now mm. but it can't last uh well it's doing a good job it, it's doing a really good job because this is again the end of season five and it left you with a really really nice cliffhanger it had a lot of action it wasn't one of those boring ones where it's like oh man now we have to wait for season six everyone's sitting there 
you know, in stunned silence saying, did that just happen? What, what's going to happen in season six now? Like it pleased and then it left you wanting more. So, well, I can see in the chat room that I'm not alone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Again, I said it was cool. So for you not to see it is just further proof of that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Game of Thrones it is. Uh, I like Castle. And that says more than I ever need to. I enjoyed it. It's a good show. All right. Uh, ben and I are doing computer technology news brought to you by Slimware Utilities, the official optimization software of Computer America. And uh, uh, we're going to go back um, uh, to uh, some of the things that, that are going on in, in, uh, at e, uh, E3. Um, and uh, this next one uh, says, from Maximum PC uh, says Steam reaches 10 million concurrent user mark for the first time. That's pretty darn good. 10 million people. Now we're talking about concurrent users. Okay. Not not like, uh, you know, over the past three years, 10 million people have logged on. No. 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 10 million at some point on this little blue marble we call Earth, mm. there are 10 million people sitting in front of a computer. At that point. At that point, staring at a screen, either playing a video game or looking for a video game or just looking at Steam. Because uh, the cr the previous record for concurrent users was 9.5 million, so evidently now it's 10. Uh, according to this article uh, from Maximum PC, that Steam is on a record-breaking spree. You know, uh, this year there have been three instances of the client shattering its previous concurrent usage record and setting a new one. Uh, it first did it in January when the number of concurrent users breached the 8.5 million mark. In March, it recorded over 9 million simultaneous users. And on Saturday, when the client witnessed over 10 million logins. Now, based on Steam, uh, Steam's game stats page, uh, the number of concurrent logins first exceeded the 10 million mark a few minutes before the clock struck 11 Pacific time, standard time and stayed at those record levels until a few minutes after noon. So, okay. Uh, you don't have to be a genius to figure out that many of these record logins were on account of the ongoing Steam Monster Summer Sale, and that's been really amazing. I mean, you're getting... They have some games that was like for like 10 bucks or something, really inexpensive. What? No, 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 no. Uh, games... That are in some cases discounted again up to ninety nine percent off. Yeah, like, you, you can pick up games like triple A titles that you'll spend tens, if not hundreds, of hours on. You can pick up for you know two, three dollars. Yeah, exactly. Really, really. Uh, now uh, set to run until ten a.m. Pacific Standard Time, June twenty second. The event presents Steam users with new deals and discounts on a daily basis, and uh, so they're they're. They're um, crediting uh, the summer blockbuster sales to uh, this event. But whatever you're crediting it to, the fact, mere fact that you've got 10 million concurrent simultaneous users logged on uh, is amazing. Yep. There it is. It's, uh, it's one of their better days, mm -hmm. and I think it's, it, it bodes well for what Steam is trying to do. Yep. Exactly. Which is, again, take over the digital distribution platform that is computer gaming. Yep, it sure is. All oh. right. So, uh, yeah, that, that was a fun story. That was a fun story. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I wish we could just sit here all show and just watch uh, demos for video games <laughs> uh, coming out from E3. There, there, so much good content. That's probably what I'll be doing after the show to catch up on all of it. Uh, but how about this one? This one is one that I think a lot of people have been asking for. It's like, hey, man, where is this? It, can we not uh, at this point? Well, here it is. CNET. Mm. Samsung. Oh, this is, a, this is gorgeous. We're through the looking glass here. Yeah. That's what the article says. Again, this is from CNET. Uh, Samsung shows retail-ready, transparent, mirrored OLED Again, by David uh, uh, Katzmeyer. 
-hmm. And uh, the new technology utilizes reflective see-through OLED panels that can be combined with augmented reality overlays powered by 3D cameras. That's a lot of uh, that's a lot of buzzwords in one sentence. Yeah. Uh, again, you know, for shopping. So uh, Sam the Samsung display has has introduced what is called the first mirrored and transparent OLED uh, display panels for commercial use. They're going to be used for personalized shopping at the Hong Kong Convention Center. So not exactly at a location near you, unless you're one of the 300 million people that is centrally located around Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. But uh, the idea is to make the quote-unquote consumer purchasing experience more visually engaging because let's face it, when you're shopping, you're you're never visually engaged. Mm -hmm. um, sarcasm there. Mm -hmm. uh, it it mentions fitting rooms where customers can model clothing and jewelry before purchase, all with the help of Intel Real Sense, a technology that utilizes uh, enhanced 3D cameras, voice and gesture control, and an automated library of stored perceptions. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it. The the primary uh, it's primarily a commercial technology for now, but reflective augmented reality in the home is also a possibility. They envision uh, the displays replacing traditional mirrors, with digital information services appearing therein. And heck, they you know this has been foretold by the uh, oh smart glass, or uh, no uh, uh, Corning's sure. uh, hmm? yeah the Corning product exactly yeah. But let me ask you this. Now look at the picture there again uh, in the story. Um, it looks like a TV that you can see through. You know, you, you she uh, they have a position with a uh, w open windows in the background, so you can see th what's going on outside, and the TV is in front of it. Would you watch TV like that, or would you find that distracting? Again, it's not for it's not for television. Yeah, it's but not for television. They're showing it as a TV. Yeah, but no, they're, no, they're not. Oh, it's not for television. All right. All right. It's it, it, it's a display. Think of it like a billboard. Mm -hmm. It's for display purposes only, and you're supposed to uh, interact with it. Okay. So so you're supposed to be able to see through it, but it's also it's also supposed to display information in in respect to you. So if you walked up to it and you wanted to see, let's say, what a ring looked like, you could hold your hand up to it, and it would use mirrors, and you could hold your hand up to it. It would project the image of whatever ring you wanted on your finger in the mirror. And then, you know, it, it would look like to you in the mirror just what the ring would look like. On your finger. It's for display purposes, not a television. Got it. Because the, the exact thing you mentioned for very obvious reasons. When you're watching television, you want to watch the program and not the window behind it. That's right. It, it would not work for television. This is meant for a display purpose. Okay. Again, I that's why they said it would replace uh it would replace mirrors in the future got it not televisions not televisions. all right so uh again they have uh, uh apparently in the non commercial tv world uh samsung has ditched oled this year and continued to go exclusively with lcd technology and for uh better i'm sorry uh better flat panel televisions LG is still making OLED. Still a lot of heat up there. But I I gotta be honest with you. This year I'm not seeing the innovation with the televisions like we have the last couple of years. Yeah. But we're seeing a lot of innovation with uh you know software and firmware. You know, uh, uh Windows is doing a lot of stuff this year. Xbox and PlayStation are of course trying to, you know, outdo each other and they're doing a heck of a lot. But the the you know just your traditional hardware just your traditional television monitors they're not stepping up to the plate this year hmm well maybe maybe they're they want to kind of sit back and let the or maybe the the technology that they want to integrate into all of our lives is still developing it is still maturing because 3d you know 3d imaging cameras you can't just you know throw one of those in there and be kind of gimmicky if you're going to have technology like this, if you're going to have a see-through television, it's got to work perfectly. Yeah. So maybe they, they, they really want the technology they want to bring out. They're waiting for it to mature to the point where they're not going to be embarrassed to bring it out.
I don't think they have anything to be embarrassed about. I mean, some of the, the screens I've I've seen are just amazing. Uh, and of course, we're getting into the quantum dot technology uh, uh, that uh, for displays and the curved screens. Uh, uh, they are just absolutely spectacular. Um, so uh, I don't think they have anything to be ashamed about. I just think that uh, I guess for the next big thing in TVs, that they're maybe they're waiting for the for the technology to catch up before they they start uh, uh, unveiling them. Maybe that. Maybe. My point is, is that they're they're like a lot of people are doing a lot of things. It's just I haven't heard much from Samsung and LG and you know all the big screen manufacturers. Don't you know they they, they haven't put out that one product that everyone's like, wow, look at that. Well, I don't know if you look at some of those screens from uh, from the what companies you mentioned. I mean, they're 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 absolutely gorgeous. To... No, 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 look, look, they're they're thinner, they're sharper, they're cooler. Like the closest thing I would say to a Wow product that that they've come out with mm -hmm. is uh, was that one that you could kind of you know take off like a fridge magnet. Like that was the closest to a Wow product I've seen. But other than that, they aren't really doing much. Okay, well. Um... Sharper is nice, you know, uh, less power is, is always fun, but again, no wow product. Well, m maybe next year. Maybe next year. Maybe next year. CNET. Maybe later this year. Yeah. Speaking of CNET, they have another interesting story that, uh, you know, um, you know, how many times have we heard the PC is dead? As well, evidently, playing games on the PC is making a comeback. According to CNET, uh, video game consoles have long dominated the video game industry, uh, offering a seemingly cheaper and more consistent experience, but not for long, according to the story by Nick Stark. Um, and uh, it's Nick Stat, excuse me. Uh, Nick Stat, yes, exactly. Um, so he says, uh, playing the Xbox and PlayStation from a living room couch isn't what it used to be. Uh, this week, the video game industry will descend on Los Angeles in the E3 Expo, and uh, much of it uh, is a giant advertisement for video game consoles, obviously. Um, Sony and Nintendo and Microsoft talking about Halo 5 for the Xbox One, uh, Uncharted 4 for the PlayStation 4, and Space Shooter Star Fox for the Wii U, but uh, from the outside... What? Yeah, space shooters. No, whoa, 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 whoa! We can't just gloss over that. I didn't even know about that one. You did. Star Fox is coming yeah. to the Wii U. Yes, it is. That is crazy impressive because I remember playing that uh, not on the Dreamcast like most people, but on the Nintendo sixty four, and that was possibly one of my favorite games. And they're rebooting the franchise and bringing it to the Wii. Does this mean that you, might a, you might be getting a Wii rather than an Xbox One? Oh no! <laughs> very cool. No, it, it, Star Fox was a great franchise, and I'm really glad that they're that they're putting time and energy in, into bringing it back. It's uh, you know, that's going to create a lot of a, a lot of buzz. And I say no as a gut reaction, but again, the Wii U is not expensive. The Wii U is like what 149 dollars, or maybe even 200 dollars. So maybe you'll get the Wii U. It, it's like it's like half the cost of of one of the other consoles. Maybe you'll get a Wii U just so you can play Star Fox. Maybe I will. Yeah. Okay. Well, from the outside looking in, it may seem like video game consoles are the most popular products in the industry, but that's beginning to change, again, according to uh, CNET, uh, Nick Stat. Um, he says, sales generated by PC games are poised to overtake those for video game consoles. A monumental shift that's is many years in the making, according to data uh, from uh, industry researcher PwC. Uh, by the end of 2016, PC game sales are expected to reach $29 billion around the world, compared with $28 billion in sales for the console market. So PC is going to take back, take back the, uh, the flag here. Yep. And he says the gap is going to continue to widen over the next few years thanks to the growing popularity of PC-based gaming in other countries like China and India. Hmm. Evidently, video game consoles aren't as, as popular in those countries. Uh, yeah, no, uh, uh, they, they really focus on, on esports, mm -hmm. and consoles don't really lead to the best esports. Uh, they, they have a few shooters out there that are, that are pretty fun. They're, they're, they're pretty great. 
but they're nothing compared to the fast-paced twitch reflexes of let's say uh you know a, a counter-strike uh -huh. and it, in those countries over there like let's say india or china or or south korea they love their league of legends they love their counter-strike they love their uh you know call of duty they love their fast their fast twitch you know kind of games that lend themselves to be competitive and you really only get that with again the the pc so console just doesn't have it right now yeah and on top of that you know their their smartphones and tablets you know that they also kind of get into the formula but they're not going to be the same gaming experience as you can with a desktop pc i mean obviously you know uh, the smartphones are are great for portability you want to play a game when you're someplace that you're not home but when you want to really when you really want to get into the gaming experience it looks like the pc is still going to be the the, the flagship device uh, of choice um although i gotta be honest with you i think there's room for both both what consoles and, and pcs i think we can live together i think we can learn to be you know of the same hive mind it's it's uh, like Microsoft is, is doing a really, really cool thing when they say uh, you can stream your Xbox One console Windows. to your Windows PC. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they're, they're they're bridging the gap there, and that's you know that's going to make a lot of people respond, you know, you know uh, uh, positively. I don't think either one is going away, and I don't think they should really be distinguished because that that line is going to blur. But hey gaming is on the rise that that's the big takeaway so if you're playing halo 5 uh, halo on your uh, xbox one and you're saying the experience will be more a rich a richer experience if you move it over your windows 10 pc uh no i believe that eventually would um uh, come down to your preference in in, in controllers because for for first person shooters i prefer concert uh, consoles Really? But for RPGs, I prefer you know computers. It's it, but I think you're going to be able to have the choice. It's not going to be one or the other. It's what do you prefer? All right. Well, you know, at least you're going to be in a place where you'll have that choice. Right. Yep. That that's the important thing. All right, you're listening to the Computer America Show. Uh, ben and I are doing computer technology news, brought to you by Slimware Utilities, with a focus on E3. That's the big news coming up. We got another brand spanking new news tips bulletin review from Marty Winston. Also, we'll be right back with lots more. Stay with us. Looking for a best friend? Brother Wolf Animal Rescue has your best friend waiting just for you. The mission of Brother Wolf Animal Rescue is to help build a sustainable, no-kill community where no dogs or cats are ever killed for population control. Where true euthanasia is reserved only for animals who are irremediably suffering or for animals who are truly a threat to society and with no hope of rehabilitation. Brother Wolf staff and volunteers go door-to-door, -door, neighborhood by neighborhood, to educate citizens about local resources available for at-risk pets and to help their families connect with those resources. Brother Wolf's community-based approach to no Kill helps keep family pets healthy, happy, and in their homes and out of the local shelter system in the first place. For more information or to make a tax-deductible donation to this wonderful 501c3 organization, visit their website at www.bwar.org. Help to realize Brother Wolf's vision when no animal is euthanized for lack of a home. Who's a good boy? Hi, this is Craig Crossman, host of the Computer America Show. You have important meetings to schedule. Your company's getting ready for its IPO. And you're in charge of the PTA fundraiser this month. So how do you coordinate everyone to be available at the same time? Are you still using emails, phone calls, even text messages to schedule meetings with a group of people? How's that working out for you? <laughs> That's so great, huh? It's a fact that every day, millions of people suffer from scheduling headaches. Well, with Doodle, scheduling meetings with a group of people is quick and easy. With Doodle, you can easily propose available times to each member. Each one checks off the times that they are available, and then you simply pick the time that works best for the group, all in an easy-to-read display that integrates with your existing calendar. Nothing could be more simple. Give Doodle a try for free, and like millions of Doodle users, you'll truly see how easy it is to find the perfect date and time for all your meetings. That's www.doodle.com.
Hey, do your parents know you're here? Marty Winston with the News Tips Bulletin Review for Computer America. This time, I fix it, spudgers and picks. Did you ever need to open the case on a piece of gear that was designed to discourage any user ever opening it? From the den of metaphorical safe cracking tools of ifixit.com, we got in three beauties to review. The spudger is a plastic stick pointy at one end and bladed like a flat screwdriver at the other with a small hook gap along one side of the blade. With it, small holes and skinny gaps become a fair starting point for the process of separating case halves. A large, heavy-duty spudger helps with slightly larger gaps, like the ones we always see that are just a little too small to fit a screwdriver. The iFixit opening picks have about the same footprint as a guitar pick, but they're thicker except at the three corners, which taper down to rounded blades that are very adept at slicing into the adhesive that holds many cases together. Bottom line, the iFixit spudger, heavy-duty spudger, and opening picks are great prosecutors for reopening closed cases. Marty Winston, News Tips Bulletin for Computer America. Welcome back to the Computer America Show. Thank you, Marty Winston, for that News Tip Bulletin review. Uh, review. If you didn't catch it, you could always, uh, well, you could always rewind us, or you can uh, wait for tomorrow night because we'll have the, the same two uh, for your convenience, of course, the same two playing all week long, and uh, y- you know those are different from last week's. They'll be different. F- they'll be different from next week's. But at the same time, thank you, Marty Winston. Those are always great. Uh, yeah, right now we're doing computer and technology news, brought to you by uh, Slimware Utilities, the official optimization software of Computer America. And uh, yeah, no, uh, we're 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 powering through these stories. A lot going on today. You know, like we've said before. Most of it is e is e three oriented, but here's one that is uh, laptop manufacturing hardware oriented. Yeah. If that makes sense. Okay. Let's assume it does. Okay, and this one from Max and PC, Mr. Polkit Chanda, uh, is you know is the author, and it's uh it's about Cortana, Microsoft's uh, voice activated assistant. Think Siri, think Google Voice, think whatever you have to. But uh, the the voice activated digital assistant Cortana is among a handful of visible changes that set about to uh, to Windows 10 uh, that sets apart Windows 10 from its predecessors. And uh, but the company has made sure not to tout it as a defining feature, which is uh, of course currently being the start menu. That's the defining feature. As they've seen with Windows 8, when you try to do away with a defining feature, people lose their bananas. Hmm. So, uh, but again, this is about Toshiba and their and their new laptops. And the uh, they said that most future laptops that are going to be built with Windows 10 pre-installed are going to have a pre-made uh cortana button huh. on the laptop that if you ever want to uh invoke cortana if you ever want to call it cortana it will have a dedicated cort- a dedicated cortana key that will sit right next to the function key at the top left corner of the keyboard mm-hmm. uh they they said that uh it's said to give cortana a dedicated keyboard button on each and every one of its windows 10 running laptops or as the company itself put it across the board top to bottom all of them get cortana that's nice yep so Um, it really shows that microsoft for better or worse not sure how you feel about uh voice uh a voice activated digital assistance but for better or worse google or not google i'm sorry microsoft is really doubling down and and going in strong with the fact that they believe cortana is going to be an asset and people are going to like her you know, I, I would tend to agree with that because, uh, I mean, I see the scenario. Uh, uh, you can be typing, using your mouse and everything, and while you're doing that, you can say, uh, while you're typing, hey, Cortana, go ahead and check the, you know, X, Y, or Z or some research while I'm doing it. And you can have, it's like talking to a person. I mean, you, you can continue to type and do this, and while you're doing that, rather than stopping what you're doing, uh, you can just 
ask her to do whatever and continue doing your work. I think it's a very natural um, progression uh, to how we use our computers. Um, I certainly can see that. Yeah, it's. Uh, I haven't had a chance to play with it yet. I I, I don't think uh, like Cortana's been out, but I don't think we're going to get a real sense of just what she can do just yet until she actually comes out for uh, you know for the masses. But I have high hopes. I, I mean, look, you know, and again, I, 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 I hate having to use, you know, Star Trek references, but, but uh, I find myself forced to in this case. When you watch the show, uh, they, they, they talk to the computer, but they just didn't all talk. They were also typing and, and doing other things while they would ask the computer to assist them to doing other things. And I think that really is a very natural uh, way uh, to, to, further interface with our computers so we're typing we're using your mouse and while you're typing you can talk to the computer say hey check the check the research on this whatever you know while you're typing your word document or something so you're saying we're getting closer to the point where we could say computer re uh, computer <laughs> reroute energy from the engine and life support systems to the forward shields yes. just in, you know just in case those romulans decide hey you know a couple photon yeah. you know cannons are going to take you out i guess See my metaphor just went right out the window. <laughs> but, yeah. but you know, but at the same time, I get it. it it's yeah. uh, the computer is is obviously more adept at multitasking than any time before. Like yes, yes. with our processors, yeah. we can do multiple things at once. We don't have we don't have to dedicate right. all of our time and energy right. to just the browser. Right. I mean, I mean, you know, you're working in a Word document, and you and you need to do some, uh, you know, ch the check on something else. You don't have to stop what you're doing, launch Google, do the search, and then go back to that. Well, you you could do all that while you're typing, you're working on it, and say, hey, Cortana, check out how to do this, or you know, what what's what was the date that such and such of it, and then she'll go out and do, and and you can just type it in without you having to stop what you're doing. I think it's going to make us very proficient, a lot more proficient in what we're doing in our work environment. I can't wait to try that and see. Because it, it, it sounds nice, mm -hmm. but if I never get around to using it, like, like if I deem it easier to open up a new browser and type it in myself, mm -hmm. but if they make it so streamlined that all I have to do is, you know, call Cortana and say, hey, can you check out the, the show times of all the movies, uh, of, of all the movies, and it automatically brings up my local theater, yeah. uh, you know, with all the show times relevant to me, yeah. Yeah. like it, it, if, if it becomes that easy, mm -hmm. then... You know, Microsoft, they're they're going to have themselves a hit it, uh -huh. it, if they can make their voice activated digital assistant actually useful. Yeah, I think so. Um, I think that and I think Cortana certainly has that ability to do that. And especially it's, it's going to be integrated into Windows 10 seamlessly. You can use Office. You can be doing other things while she does additional re research for you or looks up, takes off some of the load of what you're doing and then to help you to be more productive. I okay, think. question. Yes. Uh, did you get a chance to see the Worldwide Developers Conference? No, I didn't. Over the weekend, I just had too many. All right. Well, at this point, you're never going to see it. I will. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, do you know if there was any mention of of uh, further Siri integration? I haven't watched. I'm, I believe there is going to be. So uh, I know in OS nine, uh, which is going to, they're going to have a lot more Siri integration, uh, and then of OS course, nine. OS nine. Yeah. Uh, um, I thought they were I, uh, iOS nine. Excuse me, iOS nine. Oh, okay. Yeah. iOS nine. Yeah, exactly. Well, well, iOS is for their mobile devices, and Siri was, of course, born to their mobile devices. I, I'm talking about their their actual dedicated, uh, you know, Apple's operating system. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, because I, if Microsoft's doing it, I can't imagine Apple is just going to sit by and, and let them take you know take the lead. Yeah, I'm sure that it'll probably be the next iteration of OS ten. They'll have uh, they'll have Siri integration. Although, where was it I read that Cortana is also going to be working on the iPhones, too? Right? Yeah, she's come to iPhones. Yeah. I think whatever whatever digital assistant you wind up using, it's just going to make things more productive. I think well, it will eventually. Um, I mean, I, you know, I was just I just used Siri the other day. We wanted to look something up, but I just asked it and I found it, and I found it immediately. Remember? Was yep. it at the dinner table. Yeah, your mom said, you know, ask her, and I just asked her the question. She yeah, said, you only had to ask her four times. Yeah, no, I asked it one time and gave him the answer. <laughs> Let's just say Siri, her level of comprehension just isn't there yet. Yeah, it it's will. It's pretty good, but it's still spotty. 
it will get better. Because Craig and his and his atrocious accent is just throwing her off. I, yes, that's it. That's my horrible accent. That's exactly. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh let's see. Uh it's your turn to do a story. What do we got? Okay. What well, uh all right. Well, I'll do uh I'll do two stories in a row. That's fine with me. Okay. Oh, what, what that wasn't Cortana my story? Uh, no, I did that one. Oh, okay. All right. Well, then I. But no, I'm going to choose another one, anyways. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, how about this one? This one is. Uh, you know what? Let, let's go back to E3. We're, we're running short on time. We only have uh, about 15 more minutes left. Let's get back to E3. Let's okay. talk about some cool ones. And how about this one? Halo. Personal favorite. I've been playing it since Halo 1. Amazing game. Loved it, loved it, loved it. And one of the defining features of Halo has, of course, been its its memorable characters, one of which we were just talking about, Cortana, sprouted from the Halo universe. Uh, the other was its expansive and swooping and just really uh, beautiful, Yeah, and I do not use that word lately. I only say it about myself and about the Halo campaign. The beautiful Halo campaign that you know takes you through all kinds of things. And then last, it's awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, multiplayer experience where you you know you hop on matchmaking ever since Halo Suit you hop on matchmaking you shoot other people they die you get points oh my god nothing better in the world anywho Halo Five yes it's been announced brings the epic scale of its solo campaign to multiplayer Ooh. Mm-hmm. Mm. so Halo Five Guardians if you hadn't you know heard the new name yet won't force you to choose between the grand scale of a single-player story and the camaraderie of multiplayer. In theory, you'll get both at the same time. Uh, 343 Industries, the offshoot of Bungie that, you know, that kind of went off and dedicated itself to preserving Halo, Mm -hmm. has revealed that its sci-fi shooter will include Warzone, a 24-player mode that has you facing off against both other humans and AI opponents. Hmm. Hmm. Its maps are about four times the size of those in earlier game series. Uh, wow. the, additional re- uh, the addition reflects just how important the team dynamic, uh, also shown off in single-player mode in E3, will be when Halo 5 arrives in October. Uh, it's anything but an afterthought. And what's cool to kind of infer about that is, of course, you know, first thing, Halo 5 coming out. Oh my god, can't wait. Mm-hmm. And then the second thing is, they're going to really be integrating the multiplayer aspects of Halo mm-hmm. and blending them with the single player and and the AI and all that kind of thing. Because before it was kind of rudimentary. Like they they had pre-made maps and they threw, you know, 2v2, 4v4, 8 versus 8, and I believe at one point they even had uh 10 versus 10. Mm-hmm. And they, you know, they had these pre-made maps. They they throw in weapons, they throw in vehicles, they throw in what you know, they throw in equipment, and they let you have at it. But there was never a true AI experience to this. Like it, it was always here's your sandbox, play in it. Hmm. But you know that's all it is. It's just a giant box for you to play in, and that led to a lot of great memories. But now with Halo Five, I guess the technology has come to the point where they can start blending in some of the AI, you know, some of the AI solutions to not only cooperate with the player, but cooperate with the player well enough that you're going to be able to take on other players and other AIs at the same time. Hmm. All that. And they're really emphasizing the, the multiplayer aspect. So solo is always going to be important, but I feel like for Halo five, there's never going to be an option where you have to solo anything. There's always going to be an option to even if it's uh, through Xbox Live, through you know uh, co-op as in someone sitting next to you. There's always going to be an opportunity for other people to jump in and play with you. You know, kind of bringing friends together. It's it's very very cool, and a lot of people are still going to enjoy their solo campaign. But Halo Five again, kind of showing off that anywhere it's possible to stick in multiplayer they're more than happy to do so, which is good news. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Uh, cooperative playing is always uh, a, f- uh, a fun um, thing to do. I know. 
It is. Yeah, exactly. Um, Because instead of playing against each other, playing together in cooperation, I think uh, really makes for a a more more friendly environment. No, 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 no. No? No? No, Well, you wouldn't know this, but there's, there's a certain level of intimacy that can only be achieved when you stick a plasma grenade to someone's head and <laughs> you and you click the crouch button repeatedly there's a certain uh relationship mm-hmm. you you get when you take your rocket launcher and you whack someone over the back of the head and they fall flat it, it's it's subtle but mm-hmm. it's important i understand so like like you just don't get that playing with someone no, I guess not. <laughs> you get that playing against them. Yeah, exactly. When you BXR someone, you'll know, mm-hmm. Greg. All right, I understand. Okay. All right. Um, we have time for another story here. You know, PlayStation Four basically is also is getting a media player. That's right. Uh, it's about time. Yeah, it's about time. How long does it take? Uh, Sony. Uh, Sony could even wait for its E3 event to get started to share some of the news about the PlayStation Four. They're really excited about this, obviously. Uh, Sony is launching a media player for its console with some playback features you might miss from your uh, PlayStation 3. Uh, It'll stream media from DLNA-compatible devices on your local network, for a start, and you can plug in a USB drive if you'd rather play locally stored music and videos. That's nice. Uh, the player should be available later this evening, <laughs> so it won't be long before you can try it out for yourself. There you go. This was just announced today at E3, or at the the pre E3, three really, and and uh, if you have a PlayStation Four, guess what, folks? You now have a media player. It should make you very happy. Yeah, it's uh, I, again, I can't believe they haven't had one, you know, before this. Yeah, very very cool. All yeah. right. Uh, so we're, uh, we're just going to move right along here. Last one from E3, I think we're going to bring up tonight and then we'll get to some other stuff, but this one for all of you Mass Effect fans out there, Mm -hmm. if you remember that amazing Mass Effect journey that you went through, um, you know, span three games had a, you know, pretty much, pretty much universally, uh, panned ending but the entire game is is going to be one of the best in history um mass effect has a new title coming out okay okay uh that didn't land like i thought it would mass (laughs) effect has a new game coming out oh my gosh there you go my god perfect all right so mass effect new game coming out it's called andromeda Oh. And do not worry, folks. This is not, you know, some some poor attempt at slapping on a new, you know, uh, uh, slapping on lipstick on an old pig and calling it, you know, <laughs> a new pig. No, this is a brand new series in the Mass Effect universe, but taking away. Uh, let's see. Here in the article, they quoted far away from and long after, or in Star Wars terms. A long time ago in a galaxy far far away hmm. all right so this is not going it's not going to precede this is not going to take place directly after this is going to be long after and a long distance away from the original mass effect series so none of the characters that you know you know all that stuff is is gone Got it. it's it's a brand new episode one of mass effect andromeda and uh they had the they have the announcement trailer out at E3. You can go watch that on YouTube. It's about three or four minutes long. Definitely worth the watch. Can't wait to get my hands on it. And luckily, you only have to wait uh, 18 months. <laughs> but still, new Mass Effect. Who saw that coming? Yeah. You Did you see that coming? No, not at all. Not at all. All right. Well, I know you said there was the last of the uh, E3 stuff, but I have one more to announce. Uh, that there's just a, again, this is again from CNET, uh, the Xbox Elite Wireless Controller lets you customize to your heart's content. This is a new controller for the Xbox One, and Microsoft has announced a brand new controller for the Xbox One, and it's set to debut later this year, 
and it's dubbed the Xbox Elite Wireless. And it's all about customization. In other words, you can swap out the analog sticks and reassign the various buttons to perform new actions. It's one of the main things you can do. Fans of the first-person shooters will appreciate being able to adjust the sensitivity on the triggers, too. And there's something for the racing fans, too. Four paddles have been added to the underside of the controller, offering up a faster, snazzier way to shift gears. That's cool. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the Elite Wireless Controller will debut later this year, though there's no word on a price or a release date. Um, so there you go. Uh, again, this is all unveiled uh, today at E3, and they haven't really technically even started yet. And all this stuff is already coming out. Look at that! Controller. I know they can't wait. Look at the picture of it. It's got that. Look at that little round pad. It's got like nine segments on it. What is that? Well, no, that's that's more of shading kind of deal. Uh -huh. It's it's a D pad. It's a direction pad. Mm. So up, down, left, right. Like let's say you wanted to, you know, like think of a keyboard. Mm -hmm. You okay. would just use that thing, and and it's. Um, you know, you 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 kind of see the the X of the direction pad, and then of course it has. If you want to go diagonal, it has you know four sections for that. Mm -hmm. But that's all shading. It's going to be a standard directional keypad, two two joysticks, all the buttons. Very very cool. Xbox traditionally hasn't had much variation to its controllers. You could just choose white, black, and you know custom skinned. Mm -hmm. You you can never move stuff around. You can never change stuff. If uh, if a thumbstick broke, you had to throw you had to throw the whole controller away. That's yeah. just the way things were. This one though, very awesome. I'm glad that they're uh, releasing some kind of higher higher solution. Like uh, yes, this is definitely going to cost more money than a traditional controller, mm -hmm. but at least they're giving you the option because before you 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 didn't really. Well, you've got two joysticks, right, on there, and you're saying that that you can... well before you you had two as well. Yeah. So what's different about these two? You can swap them out. With what? You can swap, you can swap them out to uh to to lower to either lower or higher resistance thumbsticks. Oh. So let's say if you want to really, uh, this is good for like uh shooting games. If you really want that fast twitch and you don't want and and I know it seems like so little. It's like what are you so weak you can't push a joystick but no it's it's really getting the the immediacy of your motions through your controller so you can swap those out you can change around you can change the positions of, of some buttons still i like it yeah and it looks really nice I mean, it's a nice looking controller yeah i can't wait to get my hands on one for right. sure for exactly. sure no 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 and those little things underneath the, the handles those are the uh, the the power the, shifters power shifters yeah Paddle. Paddle shifters. Yep. And that's what that's probably when you're shifting gears in a car race. You don't you don't play very many car racing games, do you? Yeah, I, I kind of grew out of them, but it, it's good for those, uh, especially for people who, who love to play. Uh, oh, I'm dropping the name of it. Uh, they have very, very in-depth uh, car racing games. F uh, I, I keep on say FIFA, but that's, that's football. My God. Um, Forza. There we go. <laughs> Forza, where they're 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 hyper realistic, uh, in in terms of car video games, mm -hmm. and something like that would, would would appeal to those people. But of course, in in non racing games, they're just programmable triggers, so you can have them. Uh, you know, let's say you're playing Halo, they can switch grenades for you. If you're playing Call of Duty, they might be able to call in your your tactical commands. Like they're still going to do stuff. It's just uh, it's it's ideal for playing racing games. Okay. All right. It looks very sturdy too. Oh yeah. Solid. Could take like many beatings against it, it could, could take many beatings after being thrown against the wall in frustration. <laughs> you think you think people really throw their controllers against I've them? seen it and I have played with people who I've seen it done act like I've made them do it. So I'm not you know so I don't want to go there and say that it, it, you know people don't really do that. Oh, I've seen holes in walls and I've seen busted controllers. <sighs> Really? For sure. For sure. Wow. And this and of course this is now are all the Xbox not all the Xbox are uh, are wireless though. They all have a cord, right? Or or you have the option to The majority of them are are, are wireless nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. 
Is there any really need to have a, a wired controller anymore on an Xbox? I personally still like wired controllers because, uh, you know, I I don't have four year olds stopping around, so I don't have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. I, I do have dogs, but usually the cords are long enough. Mm -hmm. And hey, let's face it: when you're on your 18 hour to 36 hour gaming bender, yeah. you don't want your controller dying all the time. Well, couldn't so you the wire takes, takes that out of it? Yeah, but I understand that you could do it wireless, but if you're running out in that 18 hour bender, you can always plug the cord into it and continue to play and it runs. Through the what power. they what they used to do, which I really hope they do, I know it's wasteful and I know it may be harder on the environment, but they let they used to let you swap in uh AA batteries. Ah. Okay. Which I thought was really, you know, helpful. So uh, hopefully they'll let you do that and if not uh you just attach the wire to it and then Yeah. And, and while you're playing, and it'll it'll continue. Yeah, and then it'll, it'll let you know that the power is running low on your. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So then you just take the cord, just plug it in, continue to play. You know, and oh then, yeah, no, they they've, they've thought about this before. Yeah, exactly. All right, so uh, that's 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 all coming out. Hey, you know, all right. Well, look, it looks like we're pretty much out of time uh, here. Again, uh, thanks for everybody uh, uh, for uh, with us tonight. Now, coming up on tomorrow night's show. Uh, in the first hour, we're going to have a Zaniac is going to be on the show. We're going to have the company's president and co-founder uh, uh, on the uh, ninety seconds. Sadath Oberoi, Oberoi, excuse me. Uh, this is like a a camp for, but it's like uh, using the STEM education. We talked with Intel about that. They've got uh, courses and classes and camps structured around this advanced learning. Uh, it's going to be really interesting. We're going to be talking about Zaniac in the first hour. And then in the second hour, we're going to have a company called OnLoop. This is really cool. OnLoop allows you to stream a live video with yourself, with your phone, seconds. with your smartphone, and from anywhere. You can have a live event, you know, and actually, you know, you can go to a concert or whatever, you know. A, a stream it live from stream multiple live. viewpoints. Right, right. And I'm not talking about, you know, videos that you download and play. We're talking about live streaming from your smartphone. This is really one of the first. Uh, we're going to have AK Sands, who is the company's CEO and founder of this technology, uh, going to be on with us uh, in the second hour. Uh, again, thanks to all of you for being with us uh, here tonight. And uh, Ben and I will see you here tomorrow night as well. So until tomorrow night, this is Craig Crossman hoping that your hard disk never becomes floppy. We'll see you tomorrow night. Good night, everyone. Ten seconds. Thank you for using Blog Talk Radio. Goodbye. Okay, again, thanks, everybody, for being here tonight. It was a lot of fun, and uh, Ben and I will see you tomorrow night. Take care. Bye-bye. Good night, everyone. All right.